thing about Savile is he always moved around. He lived this sort of totally itinerant lifestyle, even from a very uh, at very early days. You know, he had a base in Leeds, and in, in the old days, you know, it was an absolute tip. And he had a place in Manchester called, you know, at one time called the Black Pad, which, you know, was all painted black. And he lived there with a guy called Ray Terror, who was jailed for, um, well, twice actually, jailed, uh, you know, for, for abusing minors. Um, and he was sort of one of Savile's protégés. And they had this place called the Black Pad, which was totally black. And he had sort of various places, you know, he had a motor home, he had a place in London, he had a place in Scotland, latterly at Glencoe, and he just moved around all the time. And I think that the fact that he was constantly on the move meant it was very difficult to, one, know where he was at any one point, two, sort of really get a sense of what he was doing, because he kept, he had these these groups of people called teams that sort of enabled him. They might be like a disc jockey or, you know, somebody worked in one of his clubs or, or dance halls. It could be a cleaner. It could be somebody who drove him, you know, did a bit of driving for him and all this sort of stuff. Or, or local police officers, you know, which he had in Leeds and he had in Manchester and other, and other places as well. Um, and he kept all those circles, all those teams very separate. So it was very difficult to know what he was doing. And I think that that, that that sort of willingness or that instinct to constantly move was one of the things that probably meant that he evaded capture. The guy Ray is that the guy you talk about? Is that many me? But he's the same. Yeah, the many me of yeah. Thomas Abel. Was that yeah. what he's in the book? Yeah. Seen yeah. That, Ray. yeah. So Ray was his best friend, like you say, he's kind of prodigy, and he was charged. What year was this when he was charged? Well, he was charged, um, and I I need to look up the date, but it was probably my guess would be. Late 80s, and again, I, I I need to look up the date, but he was charged, you know, well before Savile got, you know, Savile died or any of this came out. And Savile basically cut him off because I think it was like getting too close. And they had definitely offended together in Manchester. There are sort of reports on it that people have come forward to say that, you know, Terrett worked in a club with him. He I completely idolized Savile. Whether Savile would describe Ray Terrett as his best friend, I don't think he'd describe anybody as his best friend. He always said that he didn't really have friends. He always spoke about his brothers and sisters, never been particularly close to them either. And his nieces and nephews, you know, he was, you know, to me at least, he was very sort of dismissive about his relationships with them. So, but anyway, Terry idolized um, Savile, you know, dressed like him, spoke like him, was schooled in how to sort of play records and hold a dance floor and all that sort of stuff and live with him and drove him around and all this sort of stuff. But he was you know, in later life, but well before Savile died or well before any of this came out, he he, he did um, jail time for uh, an offence, you know, sexual offence with an underage girl and then um, was sort of again captured in the whole sort of Operation Utree Uchi, and, and charged again and went to prison again. I mean, like his, the scale of his offending really came out. Yeah, it's mad to think his best friend was Charles Denise, his prodigy, his mini-me driving about, doing what they wanted. Well, his, his brother was lost his job. He, he was working, his, his older brother, Johnny, was working at um, a uh, a mental hospital in Wandsworth, and he lost his job for uh, sexually molesting a patient. You know, so, and I think, that, again, that when when things like that started to get a bit close, you know, when 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 the truth started to get, too close to Savile or the people around him that might have been offending with him or whatever, or that might, you know, lift the the, the lid, if you like, or, or make people ask uncomfortable questions, Savile just pushed them away. Do you think they were the ones that then threw under the bus, though, the ones close to him, they needed someone so he would give up the people who were close to him, who were doing it with him, while he gets a free reign? I, I don't know about that. I don't know about whether there was there was, you know, they were sort of sacrificial lambs. I think that, I don't think Terrett was sort of mixing with Savile at that time. I think he was just a, a serial sex offender and he was caught and, you know, and this a girl who he abused came forward and he was charged and went to prison for it. Um, Johnny Savile was working, you know, as I said, in a, in a, in a hospital in Wandsworth in London, not near where Savile was living um, I think they were certainly in contact. 
But who knows? I mean, again, like, you know, the fact that there's two offenders in the same family, um, you know, two sex offenders in the same family, again, it sort of makes you think about the question you asked earlier, you know, where does this sort of behavior come from? Yeah. What, what, what causes it? 